so we're missing your son today. Yeah, Idris is asleep. Hi, everybody. How yeah. are you guys doing? Hi. Hi. I'm here with my wrinkled shirt. Um, and your shirt's actually, it's slightly wrinkled. It's not wrinkled. It's slightly it's wrinkled. Right Harris. It's a good shirt. I um, My energy's a little low today. Take because... the camera down a little bit so they can see my shirt. <sighs> Yeah. As I was saying, my energy is a little low today because I have uh, some vertigo that I'm dealing with. Um, is getting, it hereditary? It is hereditary. Well, vertigo it run, does run in my family. I have benign positional paroxysmal vertigo. Um, That's a lot. Which basically means that I can't lie down and then tilt my head off to the side. Because I was watching Lovecraft Country last night and I was so overwhelmed by the awesomeness of the episode. I actually watched it again today. But once it ended, I just turned over and like lied flat. But in the process of doing that, when I tilted my head, the whole room started spinning. So um, so that, that sucked. And then this morning, I was going to go work out, but I had canceled that. And then I discovered that it, like it was still keep spinning. The room would still keep spinning. But I, um, I have a scopolamine patch, which is like right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, yep, they can see it. It's and like a little round band aid. It's like a little round band aid. And so that's a transdermal patch and it gives me met the medicine scopolamine. And then the fun part about scopolamine is that it's for those of you who have like medical backgrounds, it's an anticholinergic, which means that my mouth is very dry. And if I use it for too long, I can get blurry vision and urinary retention. So I'm feeling pretty great right now. So you get all dizzy, fuzzy, and you can't pee. Yeah, That's what but, I've been, but I've been fine today. Huh. Yeah, so. So my both of my brothers have vertigo issues. I think they have acute, acute vertigo, like acute something vertigo. Cause mm -hmm. I can, like my vertigo, it actually gets better when I, when I, you know, like sit up or stand up their vertigo gets worse when they stand up and when they, and they get nauseous. I don't, I don't like, I can probably count the number of times I've actually thrown up in my life. I hate throwing up. It's annoying. <laughs> well, most people wouldn't say, no, but I'm no, no, but some people are like, Oh, like I've, I've been out with people and they've been like, Oh, I think I drank too much. Give me one second, uh, throw up. And then they're like, okay, I feel better. Cause once you get the alcohol out, like, you know, they would report feeling better. I'm not really somebody who can like vomit at will. Vomiting is, it's, it's very- It's gross. It's very traumatic for me. Anyway. When I was pregnant with you, I did that quite often. What, just vomited well, voluntarily? Involuntarily. You were like a little alien inside me and it, you just made, I'd lost weight. I got sick. I know. My look, sense look of smell was super heightened. I couldn't have people near me because you know, and your bio dad, he had to come home and shower, even though he had showered when he left the plant where he worked. He had to come home and shower again because I could smell the car leather and anything. In it, and it, I just. Yeah. And then, you know, constantly look, threw up. look at look at, you now. look what this alien got you. Me. I'm sorry. I'm bringing that. Back I, I was me. like, what? Sorry. Look at me now with the alien. <coughs> <got me?" coughs> okay. So, yeah. Hi, Deb Langford. Hi, hey. Deb Langford. Also, I'm supposed to be doing this um, panel. Hey, Larny. Um, for, oh my God, I, I forgot the name. The women's thing I was supposed to do in March with um, BET, with um, the woman who from BET was light skinned. <laughs> Gabby, Gabrielle Glore. Yes, sorry. You're I going can't. to uh, BET Women of Power? that one yes and deb langford is going to be the moderator actually so oh, shot, it'll be great out. she's a wonderful moderator yeah. she's excellent yeah um okay we have to talk about hi everybody hi mark and hi larney and hi sharon and hi ac Say hi everybody out there hi everybody out there hi and um, i have a topic i want to talk about too when we get through what the people want to talk about okay so First of all, what's your topic so I can at least know where to fit it in? So my topic has to do with a conversation that I had. One I had yesterday with one of my cousins, Chinese Jamaican, and the other one today with my husband, so a similar topic. And it had to do with the um, opportunity, I'll characterize it as that, for 
uh, people of African descent to move to another country. Okay. Pin that. All Pin right. That. So let's kind of at least like go over some stuff first. And plus we okay. have some questions. Oh, it was leading women defined. Leading women defined. Right. My bad. Sorry. 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 No, Sorry. I just, I'm kind of yeah. out of it. A little um, dizzy. I'm a little dizzy. A little dizzy. And I have a headache. So, okay. Um, what is one thing you're grateful for from the past week? I'll answer this first, actually. So two weeks ago, I was like, hey, I need to just detox. Okay. So I went on, I guess like, I want to say a juice fast, but really what it amounted to was I would drink juice during the day and then I ate at night. And that was helpful for me because I like donuts. I was eating a lot of donuts. Okay. <laughs> and when I eat a lot of stuff like that, it actually, like my body was starting it backed to backed up on you. Yeah. Well, no. It turned into concrete in your body. No, it wasn't no. that. It's just that like, <laughs> I would notice that like, I would have like indigestion and my arms would hurt and it was it was, like my joints would hurt. It was a mess. So I did that. And now I actually feel a lot better. I kind of needed to just reset my eating habits and that, that actually helped a lot. And, and, um, what else am I grateful for? I took a mental health day last Monday, which I just, I was like, I, I'm tired. I, I just need a break. And I went to the thrift store. I had a really good time. I got really good stuff. Um, I got a mug that was, is very nice. Is this the explanation for why we weren't on last Monday? Yeah, I wasn't. I, I was just like, you know what? Y'all be fine. I need, I need a break. So I learned about 90 minutes before. It's fine. Anyway, I had a sorry. Have I had a donut since? <clears throat> no, I had an almond croissant on Saturday, but it wasn't very good. And I was like, you know, Imani, that's what you get. I don't like almond croissants. I like plain. Okay. Um, Do I get to answer? Yes, but before that, I just want to ask everybody who's watching and can comment to you know put in the comments like, what are you guys grateful for from last week, or what's something that you've been grateful for recently? Okay. Um, also, I'm not finished. So as far as my gratitude goes, um, I was also grateful that my knee stopped hurting because I've been training with my trainer that I have been training with for like years. And when I switched to another trainer, for whatever reason, my knee got kind of, uh, like, I think the muscles surrounding my knee got kind of sore um, or they kind of atrophied, but now my knee is good. So I've been running like three miles. We have knee problems in our family. Yeah. Uh, plus I'm a Capricorn, so it's joint stuff. But anyway, I've been running like three miles. It's been great. I haven't been like, you know, I'm not doing it for time. I'm kind of doing it for distance. And then when I feel like walking, I walk. And then when I feel like running, I run. And that's okay. Yes. Vote for Biden Harris. Okay. You, okay. So I'm, that's what I've been grateful for. What have you been grateful for? I'm grateful because my Biden Harris shirt arrived. See, here it is. Mm -hmm. I bought two of them. So this one is navy blue. It's large, and I bought an extra large because I wasn't sure. Right. So I don't think you need it. What I wasn't women's? sure. It's women's, but I wasn't sure. So I bought a women's large and a women's know. extra I wear large. Small and, and then my large. my it's college nice. roommate who lives right down the street from Imani, she said, Oh. I'll buy the extra large from you. So I dropped it off before I stopped at Imani's house. And the other thing I'm very grateful for is, see this? Maybe you can see it better. Deb Langford against... said that she's grateful for her vote necklace too. Yeah, I gave it to her. Yes. I'm, I said, I said, I gave my daughter one, but she didn't like it. So, well, it's just, you know, and um, if they have like a rose gold Cuban link one, I wear it. They don't have rose gold Cuban link. Wow. Well, so sorry. this is, uh, the silver one, and they have them in um, a gold tone also. Yeah. And uh, so I'm mostly grateful for mm -hmm. a number of things because I worry when it doesn't look like Biden and Harris are going to kill him. I want them to be, you know, crushed. Um, We're going to, okay, hold on. Well, I just want to say, okay, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful that there have been some occurrences this week where I think he's made some really stupid, stupid decisions. Who is and he? those? Um, oh, the whatever. 40, Forty-five, right? <clears throat> and what that has meant is that I actually have been able to get sleep because I'm now in a period of high anxiety because you don't listen and and try to address that. That being said, I'm grateful for my anxiety actually being kind of low 
this past week. And I'm also grateful to my new therapist. I found, I found a therapist. Um, yay. Her name is Sharmika. Um, she's is she black. She's black. Well, that sounds like, a yeah, black no, name. she, she's really, she's really nice. <laughs> and she has a really soothing voice and it was nice to talk to her last week. So I have another session this week. I found did her you have an, a video call. I had an audio call oh. and how did I know which, um, which website or app to use? Because if you guys listen to my podcast, I'll say, I have to repeat this because I, I say my, I do my own ads. So say it in podcast voice. So, so if, what, what do I say? Please go to, please go to betterhelp.com forward slash Imani. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com forward slash Imani. And you actually like, so the funny part is that when you go to betterhelp.com forward slash Imani, like I actually use the discount. <laughs> I think it's like 10% or something, but, but it, I mean, it was, it was really nice and I really had a good time and they really like matched me. The people over at BetterHelp really ma matched me with a good, like, with basically what I needed based upon what I provided them as far as what I wanted to, you know, just talk about and deal with. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm very glad you're in therapy. I think you are going to benefit a lot from it. Yeah, no, I mean, I just feel like, you know, I, when we 45 this year. Um, and, you know, I just want to be like my best self. I feel like even though COVID has been kind of wild and kind of whack at times, um, and I'm not the person to be like, oh, well, if you don't come out with, of COVID with a new skill, then you, you know, you failed. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I have more time to really devote to myself because I'm not running around and driving all over the place and I can see patients from home. So, you know, I'm just working. I'm I'm working on me right now. Um, okay. I don't think I need to biggest motivator going into this week. I don't know. Trump being said, I don't know. <laughs> well, the biggest motivator for me is that him being sick, um, largely of his own. No, not doing, largely, all solely of his own doing. Of his own doing, yeah, has meant to me that God is real. Well, I knew God was real, but the universe is taking care of all of the, you know, the off. Yeah, because I was, I mean, I will freely admit that I've been praying that he got sick every day. Wow. Since March. Since wow. we, yeah. Like I'm, prayer works, God is real. I was like, please God. You got to be careful of that kind of crap. I mean, I understand Sometimes that. Sometimes it'll backfire, come back on. But you know what? It didn't. And maybe it did. Maybe oh. that's why I got vertigo. Maybe but here's, that's why you got but here's vertigo. the thing. I'd rather have vertigo than COVID. And I he, get it. So in any case, I prayed for this. Um, and I'm praying for some other things right now too. So what other questions do the people have? Um, let's do see. Do you have any questions that, that are live? Um, well, we have questions from some people. Okay. Um, T Sib 19 from Instagram asks, I recently started having panic attacks. Is it better to do breathing exercises or take medication? You know what? That's a really good question. I really can't answer that for you. I take medication for anxiety. Um, I take Prozac, which is an antidepressant. It's very helpful because I have anxiety. I take higher I, I, my dose is kind of on, in the higher range, but that being said, I, I incorporate breathing exercises when like I get anxious. So this morning when I was like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? And even when I figured out that I had, that I have Virgo, that I have been experiencing vertigo, I was still kind of anxious, but then I was like, you know what? You know what it is. You know how to treat it. Just breathe in and out. Cause anxiety and panic a lot of times is, is it's, it's annoying for me and for other people, because it's based upon an issue that you experienced, but maybe you didn't deal with. And so even though you've dealt with it in the past and you're like, all right, I'm fine, blah, blah, blah. The anxiety is like, oh, well, here's the thing though. I'm here to remind you that you need to really like, you know, address this concern or else, you know, you, you know, you could end up in a worse place. So I would say this, I would say that like I tell my patients when it comes to depression and anxiety that medication and therapy are actually like equally beneficial, but when you have both and you can come back, come compound the benefits of therapy and medication, then, you know, do it. So that's what I'm doing. So I would say to you, you know, I, I would say this, try some breathing exercises, like, you know, try the conservative approach first 
And then if it's still an issue, which it might still be, then, you know, go find a clinician or a psychiatrist to um, prescribe you some medication. So one of the ways I've been handling my anxiety is when I get like this, I retreat into a Marvel universe or I retreat into Star Wars. Because you're a dork. I go, I, but leave, I, am too I leave this planet and I go into another world and it helps calm me down. And um, you see how my daughter just said, because I'm a dork? There are people on this planet, walking this planet, for whom the fantasy world of another planet in a different time and space is more is nicer than it is here. Well, it, it actually helps take you away from here. So I do that on occasion. I don't do it often, but I can tell when I'm really anxious when I pick something to binge watch. Um, or when she starts yelling at all of us. Uh, uh I haven't yelled at all of you in a long time. And by the way, so AC says, I'm grateful that my husband and, and I decided to keep on fighting for our marriage. That seven year itch is a mess. You know, I actually was talking to someone today and said that I am deliberately being uh, nicer, I, I think nicer, um, less aggressive in tone with people and particularly uh, with my husband, right? Person you live with because you're in because we're in COVID. Because we're he, I'm sure he's stressed, and I know I'm stressed. And what I realized is, let me just instead of saying to him, "So, baby, when you came into the kitchen, everything was spotless, and then you fixed something, and, and now there's grease all over the stove, and, and, and there's everything." And, the knife off. and so instead of even saying that, mm -hmm. I just go and clean it up. And I decided that I was going to do that. That's very revelatory because usually you're like, I like what I, I'm this? not here. I'm not here for that. Like, okay. yeah, yeah, like nobody, I'm not hired to do that. That's not we all live here, we all have to keep it clean. But one person's definition of clean is someone else's definition. So what I decided I don't know. I mean, I don't really like that, but Well, uh, you, you think your bedroom's clean and your and your bed's not made. First of all, I think that that's not clean. Okay, first of all. I'm very anal, but you're anal about the weirdest things. So it doesn't okay. really matter. And a lot of the weird things that I'm anal about, I got from my parents because. And I got from rules. your parent too. Right. There were rules. From my grandma. And so what I would say is that, um, AC, whatever it is that you all are going through, um, that seven year itch, you're right, is a mess. It really, it, you, you'll start to, that midlife crisis can hit hard and it can hit on both sides, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, but then everybody got a motorcycle and a Lamborghini. <laughs> and but that, and that's the period where you really have to decide that you're going to be in it for the long term. Understanding if you want to be in it for the long haul. If you don't want to be in it, you had up. It's like, okay, you know what? Yay. That was the final straw. Right. But if it's not that, then you know, you got to ease up some. And this COVID and me being not having left my house more than 10 times since January 18th uh, uh, has been manageable. I'm actually but, glad you've been in the house because you be, you be, wrong, we be roaming these streets a little too much. Well, I tell you one thing when all this stuff is what so called back to normal, which is not going to ever, really I'm going to be roaming the streets again. Okay, all right. So there you go. Okay, well, you know, then you can get some hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> Stupid. Does Imani have anxiety if, if Idris has to go back to school physically? Um, um, yeah, I mean, I don't I like would. that. That's not something that, like, okay, you know what? Let me preface this by saying that I hit up my, um, my, like my three best friends from med school this morning because I was like, I got this thing. Like, am I doing, you know, am I treating it correctly? They were like, yeah, it's cool. But they were saying like, yo, we're like, by the way, we're going to be going to Jamaica in November. And then my other, my, um, my other friend was like, yeah, I'm gonna, she's like going like soon to see her family. And I was like, Hey, more power to y'all. But I'm real like scared about planes. I, I don't like, 
It's gross. I'm sorry. I know, and people fly and people have flown and it's been okay. And I know there's not a lot of people in the airport, but that's recycled air. And there are people, you know, out in these plane streets, like the Republican congressman who didn't want to wear masks the whole time he was on the plane and thinks that, you know, a mask is a chin strap. Like, I can, I can stay home and, and find things to stress myself out about. I don't want to go pay a ticket. I don't want to pay somebody to stress me out. Um, so there. I would be stressed if they said uh, it's time to return to school. But this school is so small that for certain they would have some pretty significant social distancing. But I believe that my husband and I had coronavirus back in December. And Idris was with us that entire time. And but I'm, I'm certain we had it. Did he get sick? He did no, not. Right? Yeah, no. He didn't. But we had, I was tested when they finally made tests available. So probably what, like April? Yeah. But I think was I was negative. tested in April. And by then it was negative. And then I went back for another test for the antibodies. Antibody. And that too was negative. But I am certain we had it. I, I've never felt, and I get flu shots annually. That was not a flu. And I had had a flu shot. We we had it. We we didn't have the bad lungs and the bad breathing, but the body aches and can't get up and walk. I've never seen my husband that week ever. I um. What was I gonna say? Um. Oh, I read recently that the actual COVID test, not the antibody test, but like the test to see if mm -hmm. you know you've been exposed to it, is really only thirty percent accurate. Well, it so, was mine. Mine definitely wasn't accurate. Yeah. So. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi everybody. Alma and Barbara. Um, let Hi, me guys. ask. Hi, Barbara Cameron. Let me a answer another one of your um, your uh, questions. Um, Caitlin BG from Instagram asks: If in your practice, do you ever see people with a fear of happiness or things going well? Um. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. I think, and I think those are people that more so have to deal with trauma, because. When everything is, I can attest to this, when everything is fine and everything's cool, there's nothing to worry about. And that's actually like not our norm. Like our norm is like, like what's going on? I got to solve something. What's happening? Da, 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 right. But when everything is like just smooth sailing, it's like, well, something is going to happen. Something's going to happen. And until that thing happens, I'm going to freak out or I will do something to sabotage my happiness that now I do have a project to distract myself with. So, yes, I do see that. Um, I do see that pretty frequently. Um, let's let's ask um, another question. OK, so. Um, last week's presidential debate. You guys can also share your thoughts in the comments. What were your thoughts? What, mom, what were your thoughts on the overall outcome? It looked like two old men just arguing to me. I thought it was funny. I mean, it was sad, but I was like, oh my God, this is embarrassing. I wasn't embarrassed by it. I, I, it was about what I expected because, um, is a narcissist. what's that? I can't remember her name. The, the sister who has the comedy special on Netflix, her name is Jay. Jay, she was a writer for Saturday oh, Night Live. Sam Jay. Sam Jay. And Sam Jay, uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but Sam Jay, her, her, you know, her skit, she talks about how the Democrats um, are not fighting the way they need to because they keep trying to, to go to go high when people go low. Well, that's and what the previous people, president said. I don't believe go in low, that. People go low, I get low. I don't. Because that's because you got to play. You got to make them understand. Listen, just kick them in the face and, and, and get, get on with, with it. Right. You know, I don't have it. time to mess with any back Hold and forth. And you go low, I go and, high. And, yeah, I'm like. Besides, I'm not that kind of person. I, I'm when neither. I say that, I'm not saying kind of. I am not a kind person that would allow me to you you come at me we know right so <laughs> so i thought that what we saw <laughs> as sam j said i'm not that kind of person either although i am more kind than she is. sam j said the democrats keep screwing up because they keep wanting to treat 45 like he's a president Right. When they really need to treat him like a mm -mm, from the projects. Right. Which, right. I mean, if you and how 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 this little chubby whatever 
white boy from Queens whose daddy was a millionaire and, and was a ghetto renter. And committed fraud um, and discriminatory How practices. did he get to be, you know, the mafiosa? How did that happen? Well, because if anything, I mean, please. No, because Trump is good at branding and he branded his name and we believed it because we had never we had, I, we had never seen anybody on that scale as narcissistic. And when it comes to what like when it, even like think about like MAGA, like like when he was on the campaign trail last time, he coined a term. And as long as you can get these like coinable bite-sized terms in people's heads, they're like, oh yeah, make America great again. Okay, fine. whatever. And that's you know, oh, that's, like on Bravo, like who gonna check me, boo? Yeah. That that like boo, like that, that foolishness, please. I I, you know, I'm saying that I believe that people want it to be simple. They want it to be simple. They, they don't want it to be complex. But if you looked at that whole bull over that show, The Apprentice, and I went to the first, you know- I actually watched the first finale. Season. I went to the first finale because I was working Is that when there. the black dude lost? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The black dude should have won. He should have won. Right, but he picked the little, you know, Italian bland- dude. The, Well, the bland dude from Chicago who had the wife who, what did she say about Zendaya? You talking about Julianne Rancic? Mm -hmm. What'd she say? Well, that's that guy's wife. I know, but what did she say? Oh, she when Julianne Rancic came out with her dreads, with her locks, she said, oh, she looks like she smells like patchouli and, and it's like, bitch, you look like you smell like- Oh, well, that's why like, you don't see her on television like much a, anymore because- Like an infected vagina. Because so. it wasn't a beehive, <laughs> but it was tantamount to a- they rose up yeah, no, and destroyed Juliana Rancic. So, you know, who even sees her anymore? I don't know. I love when that happens. I'm like, please tell me, show me who you are, especially when it comes to things that are racist. I think it's funny. I'm like, this is great. I don't think it's funny. What I think is, you know- I mean, what? I like I like watching them get taken down. Well, yeah, there's Like that. that woman, remember that woman who flew from New York to, to South Africa? And her last tweet was, hope I don't catch AIDS. And then when she when arrived, she landed. <laughs> the whole like South African press corps was Here's there. Here's what you caught. You caught a big pink slip. You don't right. have a job right. anymore. You, right. You got That's fired you over the course of your flight. Right. <laughs> Which is the best thing. So, I mean, I like Sheldon Fro, however you pronounce it. I'm, I don't speak German, but I, I, I love come, comeuppances. It's, it's, it's really great. Um, oh, Hannah Brown said she just purchased and watched Finding Samuel Lowe on Amazon Prime. Oh, right. thank Yay. you for watching that. I just, oh, that's nice. I just um, did a, um, a q and A yesterday with people from the Northwest African American Museum and the Wing Luke uh, Chinese Museum, both of which are in Seattle. So those two communities, Black and Chinese American paired up and showed my documentary and it was an amazing, wonderful experience. Um, but I'm, I'm waiting for you to tell me when I can talk about my topic. Okay, hold on. So um, we're gonna talk, okay, we're gonna get to that. Let's just get through like, you know. What the people want to talk about? Well, the COVID diagnosis, right? So we touched a little bit on it before, but like those are the breaks, I don't know. I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious to me. I mean, I think that, you know, our democracy is in peril and that's really sad. And I think that's why, you know, I that's one of the reasons why I had to take a mental health, some mental health days last week. Cause I was just like, I don't like, I, I can't, it was hard for me to be around people or just like. It's the collective we, by the way, who put our democracy in peril. Right. And I, when, what I was going to say didn't is care for it. it was difficult for me to sometimes be around white people too. Cause I was like, you know, this is y'all's fault. So I kind of had to like take a step back. I still feel the same way, but my, um, I guess my expression is a little different. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, he got COVID and whatever. Look, and he went, look, he discharged himself AMA or against medical advice. And the doctor, this, that stupid fool doctor who's standing up there being the you know apologist you know and obfuscation. You know right? Listen, whatever he is. I'm a DO. Whatever he very, is, very, he, very should not, he should not be playing politics with the transparency that this country needs about this president. Medication they've been giving him, from what I understand, the side effects are Mania. massive. 
They're massive. Yeah, and by the way, how will we know if he's manic? Um, any more so than any uh, any other. Well, time. I mean, I think we do know. I mean, I think, and I mean, okay. So here's a couple things about COVID. First of all, he is obese, and he is seventy four. So, but over in Fox, they say that he has more energy than a person who's 54. That's fake news. Please. Anyway, this is somebody <laughs> who, and, and you know, this is somebody who, like her, her remember Herman McCain? Oh, the one who's dead? Yeah. Who Trump he, hasn't even said his name. He went, he went, he was down for his little friend, his Tulsa, little friend. His little friend. Had all his little Negro buddies. And then he got, he get so he is a black. At the Tulsa Elderly rally. male who is obese with asthma four that's four sorry i think it's four or five surrounded by a bevy so, of black negroes so look so he so he gets he so he goes to the rally then he gets sick goes in the hospital right gets better gets sick again gets better and then he's like you know what? i feel so good like i'm about to be discharged and he died the next day and you know this what? whole thing with trump this is a really big like ethics issue like i was talking to somebody about this yesterday like as a physician you cannot like just because like you know how many patients i've had who are like i'm like i want to leave i'm like well i yeah, want to leave too see, but that's not happening but here's so. the difference that patient has at his disposal the best medical equipment the best medical minds or whatever 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 by the way by the way all of those things he's able to take advantage of while not paying any federal right, income tax. Right, he's free. Yeah, free. Right. So, so all these people who are out here living under the underpass, right, who have in their lives paid taxes and cannot afford the cost of an apartment. Yeah. They can't afford a motel room. A motel room. They can't and, afford to eat. And they can't afford medical treatment. They damn sure can't afford experimental, you know, methods of, well, which which could which could have gone very awry, but whatever. I guess you know my whole thing is this: when it comes to this particular person, um, you know, I was, <laughs> I'm I'm vindictive, and so I'm you know like I'm not gonna sit here and say that like oh you want to go home early. At first I was like that's a bad idea, but then I was like no, go home early because the White House while it does have medical. Um, medical capabilities. It's not an acute care. It's, it's not an emergency care. It doesn't care. have imaging. It doesn't have all this mm -hmm. other stuff. He got supplemental oxygen. Like I saw on Friday when he was right, he was, they, they were said, Oh, the doctor said, his doctor said, Oh, well his, his O2, I mean, his, his oxygen saturation went down 94%. Just as in, just for context, do you guys know what a normal oxygen saturation level is? Do you know? Guess. I don't want to guess. It's a hundred percent. Okay. He was at 94, mm. at 74 and obese. So I'm like, y'all can keep spinning this. 74 obese and ugly. Right, 74 obese and angry all the time. Mm. So, I mean, I'm just like, look, yeah, send him back home. Send him back home so the rest of these people can get sick. So, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm looking, I'm fine with that. I'm like, this is what you wanted to do. This is what you get. And we're running around with masks. Like on the real, I really don't like wearing masks like that either, but I do. OK, I didn't I didn't go into into any type of medicine that would require for me to wear masks because I just don't really like them. But I'm used to it now because I have to do it. And you know who doesn't have COVID? Me. Let me know what's my topic. OK. All right. So anyway, he's sick. Ha ha. That's what you get. Um, OK, so you can go to your topic because I have to use Russian. Oh, I do. Just go ahead. I'll be right back. <laughs> My topic was to discuss with you. Okay, well, just go ahead. Okay, well, so I'm going to, by myself, have a conversation about the discussion that I had with my cousin and with my husband. And was the really interesting part of it is that, um, you know how in the U.S. people are Italian and they're Irish and they're German and Scottish and French. And we're all lumped as Black or African American. But we really are. There's Southerners, there's Midwesterners, there are people from Western Africa, from Northern Africa, there are people from France, the Caribbean, Latin America. Australia, and we're all people of 
the African diaspora, right? So about a year, um, about four years ago on election night, when it became abundantly clear as all the networks started declaring that Trump had won, I turned to my husband, who I love dearly, and said, I can't be in this country 24 seven. We're gonna have to find somewhere outside of the US for maybe a condo or something in Jamaica or Toronto or something like that. And my husband turned to me and he was like, we're not going anywhere. My family has been in this country and I wasn't dismissing what he was saying, but that was the first time in the, at that point, 25 years of marriage that I had felt a real cultural difference between the two of us. Meaning that this morning, what we talked about was he's an African-American child of the South. He said he remembers having segregated fountains. He was in that very first class that segregated the Catholic schools in New Orleans, that integrated the Catholic schools in New Orleans. When he told me that, I was like, um, you have, you had segregate, Catholic schools are not segregated. And he was like, what are you talking about? So the cultural difference between the two of us was that he said to me, he never considered going to another place because what other place do African-Americans have to go to? Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm African-American and I have a Jamaican passport in addition to a U.S. passport. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, most of us who are children of Caribbean immigrants, most of us have an idea as to whether or not we would qualify oh, for Let me say what's up dual to my citizenship. Let me say what's up to my nephew. Hi, Tyson. Hi. Is he there? Yeah. This is Tyson on my mom's account. Uh -oh. Hi, Tyson. Hi. How are you? Yay. So I'm saying all that to say that what was a really interesting conversation this morning that we got to was when I said, I think that it would be just helpful for African-Americans whose families have been in this country for some generations to begin to explore what other nations might offer them dual citizenship, even though they don't have a lineage, an identifiable lineage from that, from that country. So, you know, like Ghana, I think Sierra Leone, I believe Nigeria, there are some there. And why do I think we should do this? You know what? Can I just interject real quick? Yeah, because you're more African-American than I am. Okay. Um, so I found... You are you're so rude. I, I wasn't being rude because okay. your bio dad is African-American. So I was doing some research last night on myself. And... Um, I was doing some research on like PTSD and, um, you know, how it can lead to people having like, um, you know, just low self-confidence and stuff like that. I don't have low self-confidence, thankfully, but I started thinking about this in terms of like black people and people of the diaspora as a whole. And so there's this thing called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Right. And, and so it's a pyramid. And essentially what the bottom rung is, is physiological. So like food, shelter, water, you know, the next one is safety. So as you go up in the pyramid, it's basically, from what I read, it's a lot of it can be attributed to the fact that you can move to the next stage because your your physiological needs are met. So now we start thinking about safety. How can I be safe? Then you get to love and belonging. Okay. Then you get to esteem. Then you get to self actualization. Now mm -hmm. I will freely admit, I don't even think I've gotten to self actualization yet. I think I'm somewhere, I think because my pyramid is skewed, so it's like physiological was cool, safety was like cool, but then love and belonging went like this, and then my esteem is like super big. <laughs> so I don't think I got to the top level yet, but I, but I think that also explains why I think, you know, when people oftentimes talk about like, Cons the consumerism of, of black folks in this country, you know, they'll say, oh, well, you know, we always the ones to try to, you know, make ourselves feel happy by buying stuff. But that's because we're trying to build up the physiological needs that we didn't all always have. Right. And this, this society at large, Western society at large, 
definitely degrades our self-esteem and our sense of safety. So why are we going out buying up all this stuff that we really don't need? Because Fendi it and Prada and all the brands. Right, because it, it, it makes us feel right, safe. Right. So anyway, what were you about to say? Well, no, it, was, it really was just that. It was it, it, it was that, you know, what the conversation, like I had with my cousin yesterday, who I mentioned earlier is Chinese Jamaican, his, his, his Chinese, his dad born in Jamaica, but is Chinese uh, and his dad passed. And um, his mom, um, it's probably like my percentage of Chinese Jamaican, right? So, but- Who is it? My cousin down in um, oh, Irvine. Okay. <clears throat> so when he, as a child moved to the United States and he, he looks very mixed, he looks very By half right Chinese, now. right? And he, he moved, eventually, he, when he was around 10 or so, he got here to L.A. And they bullied the hell out of him. He, so he really did not have, he did not grow up with a good relationship with Black people. Oh. Um, and married an Asian woman. And uh, is more comfortable, he explained, in an Asian community right. than he is in a, in a Black community. Yeah, I can see that. And... These are the things that in explaining, having this conversation with my husband this morning, he said, well, not everybody was raised the way his parents raised him and his siblings, which is that, look, you got to take people, just have some grace and take people for how they present themselves. Don't have it rely just on race and all that stuff. But the issue for... It's not a terrible way to raise to raise a child, but I think that, I mean, I can only speak from my experience because you raised me. Like... You know, grace is cool sometimes, but sometimes you got to, you know, meet people where they are. Uh, yeah, but I will give more grace to people who look like me. Oh, yeah, for sure. I was more so talking about, like, you know, having to grow up in the Jim Crow South and, like, how it's not always about race. But I'm like, a lot of things in this country are about race because we didn't ask to be here anyway. Well, I'm throwing it out here because I really know that this whole thing of, as you were talking about that, what, Maslow's pyramid? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I think when I took psychology classes long ago, it's a pyramid, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember it at all. Because I remember it as a pyramid. And once those um, basic needs, those basic physical needs at the bottom have been at the bottom of the pyramid have been taken care of as you start to go higher up and your sense of security, right? So right now, right now, the numbers of us, particularly young African-American men who are terrified of cops, not just leery of them. No, that's terrifying. But and although we all, we all have known for years how we were targeted, what we are now seeing is, okay, I've never seen anything like the George, I've never seen anything like George Floyd. Right? I've heard of it right. back but, in the 50s. But never seen, seen it. Right. Cannot get it out of my mind. Mm -hmm. Cannot escape that. And I don't know that we should escape it, but it is being terrorized. It is being terrorized. And that's why I'm saying we as African Americans in this country need to know that we have options you actually can go live somewhere else. That doesn't mean it's going to be nirvana. That doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. That doesn't mean your hair is going to look perfect. Or your but it doesn't perfect, mean that but... you're going to be stopped, targeted, persecuted, killed. If you selected a nation in Africa or a nation in the Caribbean, it's not going to be your skin color that is going to be the thing that gets you persecuted. No, but it could be your income, it could, it could your be, education. It could be your skin color that, you know, grants you some privilege could or be it could that. be your skin color that also grants you no privilege. Could be that because colorism is real. Right. right? And people bleach, demo bleach right. in Jamaica. And all over Africa. Africa. Right. But all I'm like, how come y'all neck and y'all face are two different colors? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's up with that? And your knuckles are all black and all this is, is lighter. That's weird. Uh, that's from bleaching. But all, all of that is what I'm saying is I wish that people would would explore and investigate their options. And I'm not even I'm certainly not saying, you know, move out of here forever and ever and never come back to the United States. I wasn't saying that when I was talking to, to my husband about this four years ago. I was talking about 
let's get a place in a different country so that when I need to go, yeah, I can, can maintain go. my yeah. sanity. Yeah. yeah. I actually found out though that because I'm I am a licensed US doctor, I can obtain a Jamaican medical license. Yeah. Because I thought I was gonna have to pull some strings. Yeah, no, I can obtain one. Um, because I've been licensed for for since two thousand and four. Hannah so. Brown says there's a man by the name of Jay Morrison and he's written a book, The Solution, How Africans in America Achieve Unity, Justice and Repair. And his ideas are similar to yours, dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? Truth be told, if my husband didn't look at me, if he didn't give me such a side eye, I might have triple citizenship because I might find one of those Ghana. I could get citizenship in Ghana. They have plantains over there, so I'm down. And the, the dish that they make out of it is called Kelly Welly. They, they they cut the sweet plantains up into little cubes <laughs> and they 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 put up like cubes. like peppers. Well they you know they cook it. Hmm. It's not like just plain. I only plantains. know plantains as one particular like like sliced on the diagonal. So So I'll your girl some... Vanity Snob. Well, I'm first generation American, so I have no problem grabbing my things and leaving. Yeah, she's Panamanian and Jamaican. Mm. Um Yes, and Alicia. Larney from the Philippines. My cousins bleach their skin in the Philippine Islands using lotions and soap that lightens their skin. And it's sad. It is. You know, it's 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 sad. I mean, there's a whole billion dollar industry that exists for white people to make themselves darker. Do you remember when <laughs> we went we when we when we took Idris to New Orleans for the first time? So we took him to New Orleans for the first time and he was like in his little, you know, like Stroller, know, stroller thing, thing right? Mm. But he was a baby, mm. so I'm, I don't know. I might have been like carrying him or something, but he was in a little stroller, maybe. And I remember we didn't even like get out the airport, and there were these series of black women who were like, "Oh, he's so fair, he's so beautiful, he's so fair." And I was like, "Fair?" And I was like, "Oh, you mean because he's light skinned?" I was like, "Oh no, you guys, no, 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 cut he that has out. my face." But <laughs> you know, I'm like, "Don't say that." I'm like, "He's." He's just a little baby who happened to be born yellow. Oh, so the numbers of people who would who would stop us and say, oh, my God, he's so cute. He should be a model. No. And no. they'd be like, what? Because this is Hollywood, right? He should be a model. You should get him an agent Why? or an actor. No. That's weird. But you wouldn't want him to. No, I would not want him to. I do not want him to I do that. I would not want him to. So Jamil Abdullah, See. I have dual citizenship between the States and Jamaica. My plan, My is, plan once is once I finish school to go back to Jamaica because that'll always be home. But I was born here. I was born here in Harlem. Um, yes, but you here, know, right here in Harlem. Here in the U.S. in Harlem, generally. I'm not talking about this location. Yes, no. But the imprint of the culture is very strong because, you know. Because Alicia's the, mom actually is sending me um, um, Jamaican curry powder. Um, not jerk sauce, I already have enough Co um, codfish and one other thing I can't remember. So, Aki, no, you can get Aki from um, Amazon actually. Yeah, so I have some Dr. Pat Jordan. Hey, Pat, Hi. my what percent of our population has the means to exercise dual citizenship, travel, own a second residence? Well, I don't, um, know. the cost of, of getting yeah. dual citizenship is probably under $400, and not that. That's cheap, but that's the cost of the applications and so forth. Right. You apply from here and submit your papers at, at whatever the embassy, the embassy right? is. And then the, the, the question as to whether they can afford, I, I'm talking to people who have the kind of ability to save up money and go on a vacation. Right. Right. Um, there are, as you might be aware, there are all kinds of, entrepreneurial, industrial people, industrious people who do all kinds of import export of a variety of things, mm -hmm. which would allow them to maintain um, a lifestyle right. intermittently yeah. in another, in another country. I just think that it is important to know that that exists and to not, you know, and, and to not feel Trapped. Trapped yeah. I'm not saying, hey, let's all pick up and leave, although I do believe in what Marcus Garvey said. I don't think we should all pick up and leave if, the, if we're not there. 
But if the extent and the depth of the of the anxiety that I'm seeing and hearing about is leading to um, mental health days and suicide and, 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 and you know, depression, anxiety, like we all are up in here feeling like, ah, there are some people who are not going to weather this, this yeah. storm as well as others. And they need to know. You you don't have to do this. You don't have to. I be had here. a patient commit suicide already, actually, during all this. I mean, I have friends who's, you know, yeah, I, their offspring have committed suicide, and I, it, you know, it, it, you know, listen, it fucked me up. It freaks me out that, you know, what could we have done? What could we have done to save those people, those yeah. children? Yeah. Somebody um, somebody actually asked a little while ago, and I just wanted to touch on it about like what are some confidence building exercises? So I know that like people asked this same question on here before and I didn't really give an answer because I didn't really didn't know a good answer. Um, I don't really deal with a lot of patients that need self-confidence um, because that's really not their primary area of concern. <laughs> Um, they, they like have other um, issues that are more acute that I need to deal with at the time. But in any case, um, I was reading something last night about codependency. And one of the, in the article, the person who wrote it basically said that one of the ways that helped her not be so codependent is to read the stories of other people who did exhibit characteristics that she, you know, wanted to achieve. So I think that if you're able to, and I think that could be fiction or nonfiction. I think that if you're able to, you know, read something that you can digest and internalize, and then you can kind of see how it relates to your own life. I think that that's helpful in terms of confidence boosting. Um, yeah. Talk about how, when you were a little child, how your self-esteem was boosted, how even though your grandmother, who had a totally different kind of hair than both of us, mm -hmm. lamented that you had you have the kind of hair you have. Well, you could tell that story because I I really don't. I mean, well, you remembered it. I really was probably like two, well, maybe, or younger. Right. So I came home from work one day. My mother was living with us, and I had Imani's hair and cute little cornrows. And back then, you know, people would put beads in their hair. So and you could I, do like this. Yeah, and, swish, and then swish, you would swish. give yourself a headache because they hit you in your head. <laughs> so when I came home, Imani was sitting on my mom's lap. And, you know, as you've heard her say, she was my mother's favorite grandchild. She really was. But regardless of that, my mother was rubbing her head and saying to her, you poor baby, your mother gave you this kind of hair. She didn't have to marry that man. I was like, and I walked over. Oh, here he comes. I walked over and I literally snatched my daughter out of my mother's lap and said to her, you're not going to do this. What? You, you are not going to say to my daughter the words that you didn't say those words to me, but you conveyed that feeling to me because you didn't learn how to comb my hair. Right. Yeah, that's right. And my mother was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. and I said, don't you ever say that to her again. So there's a picture that I posted. I think it was your fourth birthday. And I have a kerchief around no, my head. No, that was my third birthday. I have a kerchief and around I my look, head. And I look kind of like, you know. You got little pigtails? No, I'm, I'm just kind of like, can we, like, can let's we cut get the this. Cake? Right, because I'm trying <laughs> to eat this cake. But this my, my hair was kind of, I had, you know, I'd washed it and put it, twisted it up and whatever. And so when it came down, I just put a little. I tied a bandana around it. My hair was hanging down. And it was around that same time, Imani, um, I came home from work and Imani was sitting on my lap and she rubbed my hair and she was like, when is my hair going to be like yours? And I said, your hair is like mine. And she said, no, no it's, it's not. not. I mean, I, it's not. I want my hair to be like yours. And I said, you have beautiful hair, but I want it to be like yours. And that next day I went and had my hair cut to like this long. I got a TWA, a TD Weedy Afro. Uh, because what I needed to do was to make sure that she was not going through anything about whatever her grandmother might convey. And no matter how much I told her, your hair is like mine, as you heard her say. Well, I mean, it's, it's not. really not. So, but, but in terms of the self-esteem, you know, the girl kicking you and telling you, I'm not playing with you because your skin is dirty. Yeah. And I, proceeded to tell you whenever people say things like that to you, it's because they're jealous. 
because they really want to be you. Then you have to beat them up. Yeah. Then you have to beat them up, and it's you and know, then it's fine. And why are they? Jealous? I feel better. Why are they jealous? Because I'm Imani, and they're not. And that was the credo. That was the motto, motto she had <laughs> as a child. It, it turned her into a monster. But I think that you have to I'm be much better. very, very deliberate in making sure that your black children are not being made to feel anything less, less than. than because somebody is saying you're not fill in the blank. And and Imani has seen me. I've gone after people. I'll beat your ass. You. Say it again. Come at my child. Say, say it again. And it's like, oh. You know what else I would recommend people do? Um, go find some Black science fiction authors. N.K. Jemison is great. Octavia Butler, the God, she's great. R.I.P. Um, yeah, I mean, I would like go find, because the thing about Black science fiction that's so great is that it, it doesn't always take place on Earth. But when it does take place on earth, it really shows like the resiliency of black people and like, you know, that we can basically adapt to any situation. And when it happens like outside of our solar system, I think it's even like awesome, too, because it, like we this country was not has never been for us. And it's nice to actually I mean, even if we have to go to Kepler 22. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why then, I go know, to Star Wars. Yeah. I live in a Marvel universe. I'm flying around with Wonder Woman and. All the above, because you, because you know what? I don't have to be here all the time. I don't like this new Wonder Woman. So I like Mexican Wonder Woman. Alicia is Vanity Snob? Yes. Bleaching is so sad. I've never in my life not wanted my dark skin. Okay. That means you've always wanted it. Mm -hmm. But my parents also told me my skin color was gorgeous every day. I used to tan a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I like I was like, I want to be super dark. But then I got sunburned one time. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I had to stop. Um, okay, let me go. So today's Child Health Day. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> Idris was hovering in the background, but then he left. He was asleep. He woke up. Yeah, Idris was asleep. He must not be ready for prime time. The world. Yeah. Also, I think he might be going through another growth spurt. Oh my God, he's already taller than me. And he wears his feet are bigger than mine. It's very ten and a half men. Eleven. They grew again. I just yes. bought those. I just. Three weeks His, ago, a I got ago. those Adidas flip flops, and they like, they, yeah, they're elevens. Oh so anyway, what are some of the ways that I take care of Idris's health? Well, I think first and foremost, I've had people on my Instagram ask me, like, "Oh, Imani, you got these abs? Like, how you know how did you do it?" Um, well, a lot of people, a lot of trainers, I've heard say like abs are made in the kitchen. So what I, I just like, yes, I went on a donut fiasco like it was anxiety right i was just like oh like don't like i'll buy six but i'm only gonna eat one then i eat like all six of them um what i like to do honestly is just i'm more into preventative medicine i'm more into like okay like this morning what did i eat what did i eat this morning i had i made juice um because i have a juicer and then I actually, and then I was like, I was hungry. And then I made some like um, paleo pancakes that were really good. Then I had steak and um, salad in the afternoon. And I think tonight I'm going to eat chili. I just, I just try to eat things that, first of all, I like to eat. And second of all, that make me feel good. And so that's kind of how Idris eats. Like Idris, yeah, he'll eat like some spicy hot Cheetos. I don't know what that life is like because I can't eat Cheetos because I'm lactose intolerant. But I mean... Yeah, well, I would say like he's like, yo, I want a salad. Like I like this, you know, like I went over at our house, grandpa will fix him waffles or but most of the time he eats miso soup. Yeah. So right? I learned how to make miso soup really well. It's really easy. Um and most of the time, as I've said before, I, I eat dinner for breakfast. So yesterday I had um halibut, mm -hmm. uh sauteed spinach and garlic. Mm -hmm. And some sautéed tomatoes. That was breakfast. I don't eat breakfast food. I I do sometimes, but but I, like I usually just I drink like juice. I don't like to eat too heavy in the morning. Well, I have diabetes, morning. so juice is not a good thing for me to drink. Okay. Too much sugar. And then this says, um, does a child with mental health issues equate to a quote broken child? No. Okay. Oh. No, that's sad because it's kind. Of, I mean, I broke my leg one time, but like my mom never said that I was broken. She probably did though. I did not. She probably did. I though. did not. <laughs> I did bend down onto the ground and say to you, because 
I was hurt, y'all. I was like this. <laughs> like this wrist was was sprained. My left like lower leg was broken. There were no bones sticking out. It wasn't a compound fracture, but I was we like talked about this already, right? I know, but it was it was so I was like, oh my what god. Was, and what was the speed limit in that neighborhood on the cul-de-sac? Like, like 15, 70. Like so 15 whatever, miles an hour. Whatever. Who can get hit by a car 15 miles I an hour? I was eight. I was probably what, 50 something pounds. Once I got over there and saw the condition she was in and that she was okay she had some broken things but she wasn't like broken in half no i decided i needed to inject some levity into the conversation while we were waiting for the ambulance anyway that being said no it doesn't equate to being a broken child just like it doesn't equate to like a child developing type 2 diabetes doesn't mean the child's broken like it just because mental health is something that you can't always see um or that most people can't see doesn't mean that like you shouldn't try to obtain help, that there isn't help available and that the help will help your child. So, you know, if I try to, I've, I've tried to go around and help, have people understand that, um, me, you know, mental health is is at just as important as physical health. Like I thought about this the last week, I was like, it's funny how people like, let's say somebody gets meningitis, they're like, oh my God, you got like, you got an infection of your um, your um, meningeal layers, like the layers of connective tissue that cover your brain. But somehow having schizophrenia is weird. Like it affects the same like organ basically. So I, I don't, I don't get it. I, I mean, I, there's, a, there's a stigma. I get it. But you know, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe well, to those. I hope that the kinds of conversations that we have, as well as your podcast. Oh, my podcast helps, starts back season two on Thursday. Helps people with, have a willingness to talk about mental illness the way they'll talk about physical illnesses because um, that whole life of um, it can't be prayed away, you can't put the person out of your family, and yet we have you know uh, addictions of drugs and alcohol and all kinds of things like that, because many times people are suffering from mental illnesses and nobody will talk about it. We just want to, you know, Aunt Dottie's locked up in the back room and she's back there screaming. Like but yesterday's says Lovecraft anything. Country. I'm not going to, you know, d like ruin the, the story for anybody who hasn't seen yesterday's seen episode. But last week, the, the, number, the number seven episode was- like, Number Ooh. eight, number eight. It, but I mean, that one was strong no, I for had, women. I had to, yes, but I had to watch number eight twice. It's, anyway, the, yesterday's Lovecraft Country, basically, one of the, um, I guess the subplots just had to do with the fact that, you know, Black kids, like Black girls, aren't really paid attention to, especially when it comes to their mental health. So if you haven't seen Lovecraft Country, like y'all... CR says, when are you going to release any new episodes of Imani State of Mind? Thursday. Mm -hmm. So this coming Thursday. Get so, ready. Yes. Yeah, so far, I've recorded four episodes. Tomorrow, I'm actually going to be interviewing Jamel Hill, which I'm really excited about. My friend. Yeah. I yeah. like Jamel. She's, yeah. she's super nice. So anyway, um, thanks, Alicia. I am stunning. <laughs> 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 anyway. No hair and stunning. Glad you didn't attach yourself worth, worth to your hair. hair early in life. Wigs no. are hot. I'm not even going to get into it. Like, I don't understand. Like, I I would never, I had braids once, but then this one over Arrest here was you. like, I, I was like, I was like, blah, 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 I'm blah. so upset because you put fake hair on your head. Why would you do that? Yeah, but my two strands twists were dope. I got them done on High 25th Street. They're yeah. really nice. Anyway. I'm kind of tired and I need to like lay down, honestly. So we've been on here for an hour. We enjoyed. I enjoyed. I'm, we I enjoyed. Actually, we enjoyed. I actually miss having live people to break Harass. in every once in a while. No, to, to break in every once in a while. But, you know, um, can people ever tape their questions and send them into us? Yeah, actually, um, there there are various ways that you can send um, questions that you would like for us to answer. You could go to my website, which is dr-imani.com, um, and then you can click on the contact form. You can do it that way. You can also um, you can you can go to ask dr imani at gmail.com if you want to submit a question for the podcast or for the show, and um, 
I wouldn't, I, I'm not going to say like direct messages because I don't really check those like that. Um, but yeah, I would say go to askdrimani at gmail.com and send your question and then we'll be able to um, answer your question. Hi, Cleon. We need a minimum of 90 minutes. You know what? Usually we kind of do that. Cleon has the cutest baby. He does. Oh my gosh. She's so, daughter is so cute. cute. It's so cute. But I mean, I really, I got to like take a break because I'm, I have vertigo and it's, I'm just kind of tired. Okay. So. But, but I wanted, but my question is, oh, to send questions. Okay. So there you go. So, but, but my question is, can people record themselves? Is that what you just explained? No, I should just like type, like, you know, write a question, like send it in. I know, but you want to see, you want people to send in videos. I was a producer. I'm in the product. Yeah, okay. I mean, but you, you know, know what? I, I miss the interaction with people breaking in and, and talking to us. So. Honestly, that kind of freaked me out a little bit. Did I mean because <laughs> because <laughs> because early this year, uh, what's her name? Heavenly had one, and it was it was. <laughs> you didn't hear what happened? Mm -hmm. Some somebody like you know, um, <laughs> they, they so basically they were like, I want to join your live, and so she joins it, and it was these two dudes at the set. Like you could see everything. <laughs> oh my! And you mean they couldn't turn it off? No, she like she canceled it, but it, but it. I mean, I would have been dying laughing. Like y'all have nothing to do, but good luck. I hope you're having a good time. But she was just like, oh my god. So that's kind of like live TV. It's the spontaneity of live. I mean, I'm not asking anybody to do that. Yeah, but, but I mean, I, you know what? I just get kind of. I'm like, I don't want to deal with anybody on some no white supremacist nonsense because I'm gonna get mad. Well, you could get mad, or you just delete. Right. right. I mean, okay. that's fine. It, you know. Well, Brandon said he's going to figure it out. So we'll figure it out. But in any case, in the meantime, just go to askdrimani at gmail.com and submit your questions there. We will see you next week. We will see you next week. We will week. see you next week. And next week, I'll have one more of my Biden-Harris paraphernalia because what's the message? We have how many days? 29 days? Yes. 29 days. Don't just you vote. Go get all your people, your network, get your crowd, get your family, get the people to And vote. just a reminder that it'll probably be 59 days until we actually find out like who won the election. Hopefully not, but it, it might, but don't be discouraged by that. No, I mean, go like I'm waiting for my ballot to come in the mail. So yeah. I'm waiting for that, but it's Did not you sign up for that website where they, it tracks it in California and some other States too. They, they track it and they, they inform you that they've received it and blah, blah, blah. And all. so, if you if you do it early enough, and we're not mailing ours, we have a mail-in ballot, but my husband's going to deliver them. He can deliver yours too. Okay. I okay. mean, I was gonna. I just wanted to mail it in because I wanted to, you know, make Republicans mad. But it's fine. No, I'm not all of them. I know there's some Republicans that act actually are like, well, I have a large rural constituency, and they need to be able to mail their ballots in. Anyway, that's enough. That's that's a talk for a different day. Anyway, you guys have a good evening, and we'll see you next week. Okay, and I miss you. Okay. Is it safe to say that? Yes, you can say that. <laughs> yes, we we missed you guys.